Creativity is a much misunderstood quality these days, I think. We seem to have, we seem to have the tendency to consider it the purview of artists and their types. We do, after all, frequently talk about those creative types. We believe creativity is somehow a special gift given only to a few individuals, while the rest of us seem to wallow in mediocrity. Creativity, though, as the gospel reminds us, is ultimately a divine attribute. God is the only true creator, as scripture affirms. We human beings, though, are made in the image and likeness of God. We human beings, in some mysterious way, show forth many of these divine attributes, like creativity, but in a human way. All genuine human creativity in some way reflects and points back to that divine creativity. Since all human beings are made in God's image, all human beings in some fashion and to a greater or lesser extent are able to be agents of the creative. In order to understand this better, we have to learn to broaden our understanding of what makes a person creative. When we use this word about a person, we usually mean that said person has an abundance of artistic talent. He or she can paint, sculpt, sing, dance, or play a musical instrument with great skill. I would put it to you, though, that creativity goes far beyond the bounds of art. Today's gospel helps us to see this more clearly. Theologically speaking, the coming of God into the world incarnate in the person of Jesus Christ, has often been seen as affecting a new creation. The old creation had been marred by the sin of Adam and became subject to corruption and decay as a result. God came not only to restore humanity, but also to restore the rest of creation along with humanity. Through the Incarnation, God fashioned the world anew, and at the consummation of all things, the world and human beings along with it will be made better. The healing ministry of Jesus reflects this reality. God, in the person of Jesus Christ, restores people to health and makes them new and whole again. By healing the sick and restoring hearing to the deaf man, Jesus is pointing us toward that complete refashioning of creation that will come at the end of time. Healing is, then, a creative act. This divine healing, this creative restoration, continues even today, sometimes miraculously, like the ongoing miracle that is Lord's. Or it can be more mundane and the spiritual, psychological, or physical healing we can offer one another. What, then, does this mean for us, and how does this reveal our own creativity? Each of us has the capacity for creative acts. How many of you are parents who have helped to bring life into the world and have shaped those lives over many years? How many of you have brought healing and wholeness into the life of another through nursing the sick, giving alms to the poor, helping a friend who suffered spiritually? Have you ever shared your knowledge or wisdom with a person and thereby helped to dispel the darkness of ignorance? This list could be expanded greatly. Each of these acts are acts of creativity, participations in the actions of the true creator, God himself. So we must ask ourselves, How can we best use the creative gifts God has given us? How can we best aid in the restoration of creation according to our own gifts? God has offered us a tremendous gift, one of his greatest gifts to human beings, a source of spiritual healing and restoration. That gift, of course, is the gift of the Eucharist. Let us then be grateful for these gifts of creation and healing which God continues to bring about. Let us always strive to use wisely for the benefit of others the creative gifts God has given to each one of us.